Hello and welcome to my video. If you have learned programming and now want to take your skill and apply it and earn money with it, this video is for you. In this video, I will tell the story of how I earned my first money with programming at age 14 and what I've learned since the more than 20 years that have passed by so that you can learn from my lessons learned and benefit from my experience. But before we start with that, let me first introduce myself. My name is Florian. I'm now a professor for computer science. I have been managing software engineering teams that have been globally distributed with more than 100 engineers. And I have done software engineering for money for now more than 20 years. And my mission is to help you master the step from programmer to software engineer, helping you to get better at software engineering and be a more efficient software engineering leader. So if you're interested in software engineering and growing your software engineering career, then please subscribe to the channel. Coming back to the topic, you have learned programming and you now feel ready to start earning money with your programming language skills. That's perfect because it's really easy to earn money with programming skills and it even gets easier once you have had your first paying clients. The other good news is you can earn money with programming whether you want to do this full time or whether you want to do this as a side hustle while you're still working full time in a different job, part time in a different job, or maybe even during your time at the university or even in school. That's all possible. And quite frankly, I'm the best example. I started to earn money with programming at age 14. And I first had to get some bureaucratic things resolved in Germany because when you are a minor, which means you are below the age of 18, you are not allowed to start a business and work as a freelancer. So I first had to apply for a special permission to actually be allowed to offer my services to other companies and to be able to write invoices to other companies. But once I had this formal permission to actually work as a freelancer, I was able to start my web development business at that time, primarily building websites and e-commerce shops. And at that time, 2001, there were no freelancer services like Fiverr or Upwork or similar services around. So I had to get a little bit creative how to get clients and, and how to make myself visible in the community or in, in the region and um, how to attract clients. So what I did is I contacted a local newspaper and said, hey, I'm a 14 year old starting a web development business. Are you interested in writing an article about me? They were quite happy to write a story about a 14 year old starting his own business. So they wrote the article, it appeared in the newspaper and it worked. Companies started to call me asking for web shops, asking for quotes, I had a lot of discussions and I had my first projects that I was able to start. Nowadays, of course, I would use a service like Fiverr, Upwork or similar to get projects to look at what are other freelancers working on and also what are prizes and hourly rates that they use for their work. Because that was actually one of my first struggles that I had convincing myself that I can ask for money for my services. Because I was a 14 year old teenage boy. I enjoyed programming. So for me, it didn't feel like work, the work that I did for the clients. I had a lot of fun doing that. I still very passionate about 
programming and it still doesn't feel like work for me and it didn't feel like work at that time and I was still learning a lot building up my self-confidence also in programming so I really had trouble asking for money and that's something that happens to a lot of people starting freelancing but the thing that you have to consider here is you have invested a lot of time in learning programming. It's not easy to learn programming. So you have spent all this time learning programming. You have learned a skill. Second of all, the person that hires you to write code has a business problem. So by solving that problem, you provide value. And then it's only fair that you are compensated for your skill and for the value that you provide. And now you also have the opportunity to really find out what is a good hourly rate to start with. And you can always increase an hourly rate over time, not necessarily with your first customers, but you can always get new customers and then increase your hourly rate. The second thing that I learned while starting out is that there is still a lot of things that you need to learn. Even though you know how to program, even though you might know one or two frameworks and you have done some projects already, there always is something that you need to learn with each and every project you start with. And that can take a lot of time. And that's why I decided I need to have a partner that's more experienced. I need to have somebody that is helping me accelerating my growth and my learning. And that's why I looked at agencies in the region that did web development. And I got in touch with some of them. We talked about, hey, I'm interested in doing web development. I have already a couple of projects, but now I'm looking for a partnership. And I was lucky enough that I found one agency that I could partner with. And that really helped me a lot in two ways. Of course, Due to the experience of the guys in the agency, I was really able to take the next growth step much faster than I probably would have been on my own. So I really accelerated my learning curve. And on the other hand, it makes a real difference for a client, whether there is only a 14 year old boy that is quoting, that is responsible for your business or whether there is a full fledged agency and that made attracting clients even easier, at least for me. So this was the story of how I earned my first money programming. But what are my suggestions that I would give you on your journey when you start out to earn money? with programming. Well, working as a freelancer is great. And if you already have built up some confidence and if you have built up some experience, it's really a great way of earning money with programming. The only challenge that you might have when you're starting out and you're still learning is that you cannot satisfy the expectation of your customer, particularly about how fast you can turn around a project and how fast you can find a solution for a given problem. So what might help there is first working on projects like WordPress themes, WordPress plugins or apps that can then work on offline without somebody waiting for it without somebody breathing down your neck and uh, calling two times a day to ask you whether you're already finished. So you can really learn you have the time you need without that added pressure of having a customer waiting for you. And then once you have done a couple of those projects, you are then definitely ready to work with a customer. And that also helps you with my second suggestion, right? If you want to start earning money with something and it doesn't matter whether that's programming or something else, you need to provide value. And in order to be able to do that with programming, you need experience. 
you need to have worked on a couple of projects before you can actually charge money for your services. So you really have to think about, am I already ready to earn money with that, to ask money for my service? Or do I maybe still have to do one or two projects for free? Or you, you can also just do projects, right? They don't have to be for a customer so that you build up this confidence and this experience that you're then really are able to deliver on what you have promised to your customer. Because there is nothing worse than promising something to a customer and then not being able to deliver. And here it can also help when you partner up with somebody like I did that is more experienced, that it can help you whenever you are stuck and that way you are able to deliver on what you have promised your customer. And of course, also when you start out accepting projects for money, it's always a good idea to start with a small project first and then continually increasing the size of the projects if you want to do that or just staying with the small projects. There's also no harm in that if you feel comfortable just doing them and if the money is okay, why not, right? It doesn't have to be big. And lastly, it has probably never been easier to start earning money with programming than now. There is a plethora of freelancing platforms out there. There are lots of ways to get clients. And at the same time, there is a lot of free information out there, free content that is available on YouTube or other platforms that give you the skills to earn money with programming. And that's really a situation that I 20 years have really just dreamed of, right? When I want to learn something, I needed to go to the library and get a book. So the luxury of having a YouTube video, just a couple of clicks away that solves your problem, that talks about your problem, that's really something that you need to take as your advantage and that, that you can leverage to have a very fast learning curve and to be successful earning money with programming. So my question is now for you, what's stopping you from starting earning money with programming or have you already started and do you have questions on how to make it even better or how to make even more money? Please be part of the discussion in the comments below and if you have found this video helpful, if you have liked it, and if you want to see more videos just like this one, then please smash the like button. And as I said, if you're interested in software engineering, if you want to make the step from programmer to software engineer, then please subscribe to my channel so that I see you in the next video.